Good afternoon, and thank you for uh, tuning in. This morning I read something that I felt really telling. It was written by a woman named Laura Dodsworth. First they came for the truckers, and I did not speak out, because I was not a trucker. Then they came for the donors to truckers, and I did not speak out, because I was not a donor to truckers. Then they came for me, and there was no one left. to speak to me. <sighs> Yesterday, I per personally witnessed a woman get trampled. Her name was Candace Cerro. She's alive, despite the rumors. However, Today, police are employing pepper spray against Canadians. So it's a dark day in our history. Never in my life would I believe anyone if they told me that our Prime Minister would refuse dialogue and choose violence against peaceful protesters. We're all in shock, and we are cur currently organizing legal counsel and support for those injured by police brutality and for those being arrested Proud citizens demonstrating for their freedoms are now being apprehended for holding Canadian flags. They are being targeted for waving our glorious maple leaf. As, as we have seen, each time the government throws hurdles our way, it only strengthens Canadians' resolve. This demonstration has never been about COVID-19. It's been about the restrictions on personal autonomy that have been falsely justified for public safety. The infringement on our rights is now obvious and on full display in our nation's capital. Three of our organizers, Chris, Tamara, and Danny, have been arrested on petty counts of mischief and bank accounts of those who dared speak out have been frozen including mine. All in Trudeau's desperate attempt to intimidate the opponents of his tyrannical regime. This is a grassroots movement, and others will fill their roles. Others have already filled their roles. People want a hero to rally around. There is no single person who leads this freedom convoy. This is ordinary Canadians who are asserting their rights. I'm certainly not a hero. I'm simply... <sighs> a father. <sighs> I never thought I'd see the day when law enforcement officers would be arresting citizens for the crime of exercising their charter rights and freedoms, to free assembly and free speech. It remains to be seen if Canadian democracy can survive such an abuse of power. There are hundreds of police on Parliament Hill. Many are here in riot gear holding military assault rifles. There are armored vehicles and police transport buses. For what? We have no answer to that question. When someone held up their arms to protect against a baton being swung at their head, the Ottawa police claimed that their weapon was being reached for. Now they are claiming that not a single protester was trampled. I saw it myself. I was 10 feet away. Minutes after Tamara Litch crouched down to be in a picture with a little girl while exchanging hugs and well wishes with fellow demonstrators, she was arrested for aiding and abetting mischief. The next day, Danny Beauford pleaded with his fellow police officers right here beside me. He stood here, right here, and pleaded with his fellow police officers. And he was immediately arrested within the hour. 
this is very reckless and it escalated and it is escalating it's escalating our support that's all it's escalating it's painful is this a democracy is this Canada can you hear democracy democracy's death now it rings louder than the truckers horns The mainstream media has portrayed us as anti-government. I read that this morning on the mainstream media. Well, I've been pleading with the official Canadian government to talk and read our plan because the only plan that, that they have is violence. And the institution of a Chinese-style credit, social credit so score system, the, inf the entire federal government the entire, all of the members of parliament at the federal level should be ashamed of themselves. They have failed us badly. But instead they're going to give themselves a third pay raise throughout this pandemic while other people are going to lose everything. We have always been a peaceful protest. There has never been violence in the three weeks that I have been here, just peace, love, hugs, and singing, O Canada. The violence came to us when the police arrived. The police brought the violence. To that end, as a movement, we have chosen to peacefully withdraw from the streets of Ottawa. There is nothing to be gained by being brutalized by police. We will simply regroup as a grassroots mo movement. If the police can tame their insatiable need for violence and remove the barriers preventing us from actually leaving, we will peacefully withdraw starting today. The truckers will be initiating a charter challenge seeking to have the court strike down the unconstitutional vaccine mandates that discriminate against us all. I'm going to read this from a dear friend. I'm so disappointed on how the truckers' peaceful protest for freedom has been met with violence by the police and the government. We call upon all Canadians to join us in a movement of silence and prayer. We pray for peace, freedom, and openness from the government to engage in a healthy discussion. We want safety and freedom for all Canadians. Just give me a minute to grab some water and I'll take some questions, but please make them good. It's been a hard day. Okay, so um, obviously people are really upset here um, in learning in light of this information. Uh, we know the truckers are leaving, but that doesn't mean the protesters have to leave, does it? Every protester here who is on foot in a vehicle, we are not going to behave like the government and tell you what to do. You make your own choice. You've made your own decision. Many of the truckers are, are choosing to peacefully withdraw. Many people are walking into the city and choosing to exercise their right to protest on foot. So I'm not telling anyone what to do. I'm telling everyone to dig deep and decide what is best for them. Since, since the beginning, the city has asked you to leave, the police have asked you to leave. They've declared this occupation illegal for Do you not have some responsibility here for, for what happened today? I mean, they have made it clear that they were going to declare to deploy riot teams, and you chose to stay. I mean, do, you, do you bear any responsibility for that? What laws have we broken? I think the police have. have what laws have we? Them. What laws have we broken? They're they're parking infractions. Parking infractions. What laws? You tell me. 
Next question. By peacefully uh, withdrawing, does that mean they are still holding the line? Every trucker will decide for themselves. Um, we have many truckers who feel that uh, the best course of action for them and their families is to peacefully withdraw and regroup and plan our next move because we're not going to just stand there and be a punching bag for law enforcement. I've been asked to tell you that America is watching. They're watching very acutely as to what's going on here with this violence that's taking place against the truckers. Um, my understanding, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Pierce, uh, Kirsten Pierce, the liaison officer with the OPP at 10 a.m. this morning was advised that there would be a peaceful retreat at one o'clock and that there'd be no reason for any violence whatsoever. And since 10 o'clock, we've had rubber bullets, tear gas canisters, and beatings. I, I was in communication with the police this morning myself. Um, the police, uh, the OPP liaison officer that I've been dealing with, exceptional guy, honestly. He passed up the message of the chain of command. Um, I guaranteed him that the, the vast majority of the, of the truckers do want to peacefully withdraw but it is an individual choice for every trucker. And uh, we need their assistant, assistance to actually move barriers to let us out. And we also need to be able to get fuel into those trucks so that the trucks can actually drive out of here as well. And the response I got was, I'll pass it up the chain. And you know that was uh, at about 10 after 10 this morning. There are a lot of Andrew Lott in True North. I had a, a source that said that uh, the convoy organizers are in control of the give, send, go money, and it's in unfrozen currency, and it's made it into Canada. Is that accurate? And if so, what's the plan with that money? Honestly, I, I really cannot speak to the give, send, go, um, that, that issue at all. Like, I'm, I'm not on the inside in those particular discussions. Um, but what I can say is that Ordinary people, I had, a, I had a wonderful woman that I met last weekend walk up to me and just give me a $10 bill and said, could you put this into the hands of the trucker? That's what I did. And we have had, um, I would say, probably hundreds of thousands of dollars donated in cash from, from anonymous donors that just want to support us. And what is going to happen to that money? We see about a million dollars has been released. Is this going to be dispersed in any way to the people who have suffered property damage? Is there going to be any Property, people who are okay. That's a Tanya Harding question. Next. No, no, no. You have a million dollars. What's going to happen to the money? This was donated. Next to question. Here, not you how, how much money do you have? Right now? Right now? Me personally, I have no, 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 none. No, no, no. It's so been what, frozen. Do you have a not, you have a not for profit? Do you have yep. money to the bank account of your not for profit? I don't know. Next question. That's your your supporters. Do you owe them some accountability? Surely. He you said have he a, a bank know. account. I don't know. know. I don't know. He doesn't know. know. Doesn't know. That's his answer. Why do you want another one? Because that's a million dollars that donated to the people but on the street and no one's know. seen it. I haven't talked to anyone who's seen it. He said he doesn't money. know. He's not part and of that. Knows? Okay. Who, who has your wallet and bank accounts, please? I'm researching. Just stop. Anybody else have a good question? Do you think that uh, by having the truckers withdraw from the city yep. that uh, the Trudeau government would consider negotiating with organizers? Um, that's a good question and I want to be very careful about how I answer that because from day one the mainstream media has painted this as anti-government and some ridiculous comments about us wanting government change completely false. I've never sat in on a meeting with that as a, as a talking point. So I want to be very clear that our intent has always been and always will be to talk to the official government of Canada. I have stood at this podium. I have done other media uh, events where I have outlined a plan and I've said, I'd like to talk to you. The response was riot police. No discussion, no dialogue. And I think Canadians should be absolutely appalled by the fact that we elected these people to represent our best interest, but not to lord over us like kings and queens and refuse to talk when, you know, they prefer violence. So. 
I'm going to be, I just want to leave it at that because I know how this will be spun. But I think people are smart enough to realize that uh, the, the preferred course of action from the government of Canada is violence over peace. What's Thank the you. most meaningful thing Canadians can do who aren't in Ottawa um, to, to help lead your cause um, at this juncture? I would, this, you know what the, the most meaning thing, meaningful thing people can do? is learn the Charter of Rights backwards and forwards. Understand what's inside it. And if you don't have a copy, Google it, or look inside your passport. I'm pretty sure it's written on the inside. Start exercising your Charter Rights. Do it today. I don't wear a mask. I haven't worn a mask since the spring because I read the science. I understand the science. A virus is three microns. A mask, the, the, the holes are 60. It's like kicking a fly through a field goal. And I know that in the mainstream media world, the sound bite will be that Tom is an anti-masker. Yes, well, I'll wear a mask when it makes sense, if it made sense. But all the scientific journals that I've read say it doesn't make sense. All the doctors I've talked to, the vaccinologists, Dr. Um, Byron Bridal, say it doesn't make sense. That's the science I listen to, not the political science, the actual medical science. You mentioned uh, speaking to the uh, OPP liaison as recently as this morning. In your conversations with uh, police, has there been any discussion about uh, whether there's a, an amnesty granted to those leaving peacefully today? Or, or has, has that topic come up in your conversations about arrests after the fact, arrests yeah. today? Not, not directly with the police. They haven't uh, indicated to me one way or another, but I have been told that uh, it's, a, it's a bit of a catch and release operation um, where they're taking people to the ed edge of the city and releasing them outside of the, uh, the downtown core. That's, that's what I have been told. Most of the other organizers have been arrested and charged now. Are, are you facing arrest? I asked yesterday if the, uh, I asked the OPP liaison team if there was an actual uh, arrest for, or a warrant for my arrest, and they said not to their knowledge. But, you know, today's Saturday. I, I don't know. That was Friday. Or is this today Sunday? I don't even know what day it is anymore, but it's, it's starting to be Groundhog Day. Yeah. Americans are asking that the United States, every elected official must be licensed, bonded, and insured from school boards to governors. The license is their oath of office. In the United States, they've started to go after the bonds, and they're winning. Is there a similar type of thing here in Canada? You'd have, to, you'd have to ask a lawyer. That's a good question. I'd love to see the results of that question, but I don't know. And okay. I, and they yeah. are winning in the United States, yeah. so maybe we should be yeah. going after them through the Charter of Rights. Yeah, I don't, I don't have any answer for that. Uh, there was a question over here. Yeah, just a, a follow-up. So when, when all the truckers who are here are, are getting in their trucks and leaving, yeah. you said that you want them to go home. So are, are no, you I don't, I, I'm not going to tell them where to go. Uh, we have uh, places for them to go uh, as an intermediate point where they can rest, refuel, um, and, and you know, say goodbye to friends or say, um, what's, what's next? But are you wanting? Are you wanting to see, or specifically not wanting to see, other blockades form at other points in the country? I think, as a grassroots movement, um, we will. Um, for example, we we had no communication, no contact with what was happening in uh, any of the other grassroots movements across Canada. You know, Niagara Falls, Fort Erie, uh, Detroit, um, Windsor. Um, all across the Canada, all these grassroots movement popped up. You could say that we inspired people to actually take action, but we certainly were not uh, giving any direction. These movements are just organic. They pop up where, where people want to get up and do something because they're fed up after two years of being treated like this. So um, we are not directing anyone to go specifically to any one place and to take any action. We are simply um, peacefully withdrawing from this area because we don't believe that there's anything that can be gained by being a, a human punching bag for the police uh, or being arrested or having their property seized or destroyed. So um, we're just 
going to regroup and, and figure out what's next. Maybe, maybe it's the court action that uh, we're going to be not launching. Maybe it's actually more grassroots roots movements. <coughs> One more question. Uh, the yep. Americans are saying that they've read over the emergency declaration mm -hmm. and the uh, Charter of Rights and Freedoms is supposed to su uh, survive the, um, the emergency declaration, which means the free movement of a Canadian citizen anywhere in the country without any obstruction whatsoever. Mm -hmm. How can the police justify this militaristic state where they're actually barring people from coming into Ottawa? Well, you know, it's a good question. And you're referring to Section 6 of the Charter, I've read it as every Canadian should be reading it today. Um, you know, it's curious. They've, they've uh, given themselves political cover and, and protections uh, under this emergency order, which do not apply to us here in Ottawa. Maybe there was a case to, to be made that they applied somewhere else, but they don't apply to us here in Ottawa. But I find it very interesting that at the federal level, the Federal MPs did not go to work yesterday and actually start debating the, the actual legality or the, the improper use of the Emergency Act, which is their duty to do. And instead, what they're doing is they're stalling and they're allowing these things to, to happen to Canadians right now until the seven day uh, period ends. And then at the end, they can all look at themselves and go, ah, oh, oops, yeah, we did vote it down. But the damage is already gonna be done, right? So we, we need, honest to God, people with moral courage in this town. Moral courage, absolute moral courage, because people here are displaying physical courage and a lot more moral courage than you're seeing up in parliament at, at every party's level. Well, every every political party in this country. I'm not, I'm not impressed with any of them. Um, but I will talk to the federal Liberal Party if they want to sit down and go through this plan and make it work. Laura, oh sorry, I I'm going to come back to you, Laura. Yeah. Sorry. Um, so just the public is asking a bunch of questions here, and one of them is, what do you see happening, or do you have any insight or opinion on what may happen uh, this coming Monday? A lot of grandstanding, a lot of uh, political theater, but I'm very doubtful that any substance will come out of it, if you're referring to the, uh, the, the vote. The vote. I, I think it'll just be uh, the greatest show on earth with no results. That's Tom Marazzo's personal opinion, because you asked me, not Thank the comment. Thank you. <laughs> Laura Lynn, do you have a question? Thank you. Um, to your uh, point about the uh, federal, all federal parties. I'm reading here that Speaker Anthony Rhoda said, given these exceptional circumstances and following discussion with all recognized party leadership, the sitting today is canceled. More information will follow. And that's to do with the lack of debate that took place yesterday at a very crucial date. And he seems to be saying that all leaders agreed to this. Where was the Conservative Party leadership in, in a moment when we are on the street uh, being attacked? Where, where was the fight? Where is one, as Rex Murphy says, where is one courageous hero in all of Parliament? It's a great question. And I think all Canadians should be asking this question. Where the hell have they been for two years? Okay, honestly. Where have they been? All in the globalist pocket. <laughs> well, I'm not going to speculate on that piece, but you know, it's pretty. It's pretty. Uh, just at a at a Canadian level, just in within our own borders, I'm absolutely disappointed and appalled that uh, you know the 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 talking points in the last debate had nothing to do with why we're all here. Nothing. It was just political theater. And, and, and I think Canadians were just disgusted and frustrated and really disappointed by the conduct of these people. They don't get it. They just don't get it. And they don't care to because from my perspective, they live inside the Twitterverse and they don't see what's really happening in people's lives. 
Do you know how many stories I have heard, which all of you probably have heard while you've been here on the ground, of the carnage that they have left in their trail for the last two years? You know when a six-year-old says they want to kill themselves because they can't take it anymore? You know, the suicide rate is off the charts in this country right now. The, the mental health is off the chart. It is ridiculous. You know, and what do they do? They grandstand, they get nothing done, they lock us down, and then they give themselves raises while closing people's businesses. And by the way, for the citizens of Ottawa, we were begging the city to open up those businesses so we could support local business in this town. We wanted to shop in their businesses. We wanted to support it. We shoveled the sidewalks. We did the garbage collection. We provided first aid to people. We didn't do anything to this city. There was no damage. There was a little inconvenient noise. I'm sorry. But we're here fighting for all the people that actually hate us too. So you tell me where the federal members of parliament have been. You tell me where all these provincial members of parliament have been. And you know what? I'm not buying this crap from all the, uh, the, the provincial uh, premiers. I see a bait and switch. I, that's what I see, is a big bait and switch, okay? And what I've asked for several times is we want, we want a charter challenge before the Supreme Court, or a, a charter reference, excuse me, and we also want an open public inquiry into the actions of the federal and provincial governments and the mainstream media. I stood at this podium yesterday and I outlined that entire plan. I read it right from the plan that we have submitted to all federal parties. And they did confirm that they received the plan. And yet, I tried all night to get a meeting with anybody. And here we are. I'm still standing at this podium waiting for them to come and talk. Andrew? Uh, what would your comments be to the mainstream media? I know myself and our team, we were on the front line all day yesterday. I didn't see a single act of aggression, truly, yep. um, from um, the protesters, either than self-defense. Yep. But on CBC, on their live, they're doing 24-hour coverage. They're saying that protesters are being uh, aggressive and uh, aggressive towards forces as well. What are your comments there? I'll just second that, because I was also on the front lines yesterday. Yeah. Thank you. I would, I would honestly say I was there right at the line. Um, and you know what I saw? I saw people trying to reason with the police. I was there when uh, O Canada broke out. And when O Canada was done, I saw a woman get shot in the face with pepper spray from about eight, 10 feet away. That's what I saw, okay? We didn't show up with pepper spray. We showed up with love. Respect. Love, respect, yeah. Yeah. there was great music, yeah. people were dancing. Yeah. Um, that's what we showed up with. We didn't show up to fight physically, we showed up to assert our rights. They showed up with assault rifles, rubber bullets, tear gas, pepper spray, riot gear, snipers, UAVs taking our picture for facial recognition. That's what they showed up. You know, the full force of law enforcement was here to go against unarmed citizens in this country, in our nation's capital. And we've given them a way out. We've given them a plan. They work for us. We don't work for them. They can't seem to understand that. You know, this isn't some little uh, hostage negotiation. I never asked for things. I asked for a conversation. I asked for them to listen. Here I am, standing at a podium again, with not one member of the federal government standing here talking to any of us. Complete failure. They should be ashamed, and I would say the mainstream media has a lot to account for. I watched it this morning. I couldn't, I couldn't stand it anymore. I had to mute it. I had to mute it because I couldn't stand the way they positioned the story. They create a narrative that we brought the violence. We brought the peace, we brought the hugs, they brought the violence. Ottawa police are saying uh, protesters have 
trusted, and in some cases pepper sprayed because they've been, quote, threats and assaulted. Auto police have said that uh, one occupier threw a bike at uh, I was right there. Never saw a bike in front. I, I was standing right there. I was 10 feet away yeah. when that woman got trampled where's by the horse. And, and where's, the yeah, where's the body cam evidence? Yeah, there is an Okay, there and you know what I saw? You know what I saw yesterday at the War Memorial? I saw a veteran get tackled by a bunch of police and then beaten. while he was down, was beaten. And you can clearly see also in the same videos, right behind the crowd of cops, they're using their assault rifles and somebody's rifle butting somebody repeatedly on the ground. That's what you see. Thank you. And if anybody would like to come and see me after, I yep. do have a recorded video of that incident. So, so uh, I can share that with anyone yeah. who would like. So okay. You know what? Uh, I cannot say that with 100% certainty because, you know what? There is such a thing. It's actually, truly, it's been studied in science called mob mentality. And when you have a police officer moving in on you and pushing you, you know what, you're, you're not gonna move. And, and I did see a lot of police pushing, pushing and shoving, and what I saw was the protesters turn their back on the police and just stand their ground while the police pushed through. And I was there when those horses came flying through. They were enormous, they were, those horses are huge. And we just got pushed right out of the way like we were not even there. And it was unnecessarily violence. It was, it was just disgusting. And I, and I hope that every, each and every one of those police officers that were there yesterday go home and they uh, went home last night and looked themselves in the mirror and said, what the hell am I involved in? Who's telling me to do this? Who is controlling, you know, I, you know for a police officer, if you if you've took an oath to serve and protect, I don't know who in the hell you were serving or protecting. How old did you see this ending? I mean, you know, you've, you've seen images, I'm sure, yeah. Yeah. Any large crowd that won't disperse. Yeah. Did you just like? Why, why are you so? To be honest, why are you so surprised that this has been the reaction? This has been the police reaction. Well, for one, the only laws that may have been broken were parking infractions. Two, we a judge at the beginning of this, Judge McLean, actually ruled that we had a right to be here. We had a right to a peaceful protest. Yeah. Okay, that happened three weeks ago. And so we remained in the police. I worked hard with the police. We worked exceptionally hard to keep all the safety lanes open to make sure no ambulances or emergency vehicles were obstructed. And I think we were very effective of that. But at one point, I asked the, the, the police asked me to confirm whether or not uh, an intersection was clear. I walked down personally myself. What did I see? None of our trucks, a concrete barrier, heavy equipment, and five police officers blocking the intersection. Not us. Not us. So you know what? I have tried to have dialogue. I have had many interactions with um, uh, Ottawa police, OPP. It's, it's frustrating. It's frustrating because we have always maintained that we're here for peaceful, a, a peaceful protest. And that we were, we actually had a deal with the city to consolidate our trucks up onto Wellington. We had a deal with them. And then the Emergency Act came out and the OPP said, yeah, that deal you had with the city, that's off the table, you're done. We had a deal to consolidate and to help open up this city so that people from Ottawa could have less stress on them because we said from day one, this, this issue is with the federal government, not the people of Ottawa. And they, they sabotaged it. And then they, they took direction, the, the, the city took direction from the federal government, which is beyond bizarre to me. There are a lot of parents of small children who are here today. There are a lot of kids who yep. are pretty close to yep. the lines with police, or at least they're moving forward. Do you have any message to the people who've been bringing their children into downtown Ottawa today? <sighs> you know, I personally would not bring my children into this type of a situation. That's my personal opinion for me, but. I'm not the government, I'm not gonna tell you what to think, I'm not gonna tell you what to do. I'm gonna allow other people to make their own decisions. And so I'm not gonna tell parents what they can and cannot do with their children. They, they are watching on social media, they're seeing what's going on, and they have to do their own risk analysis and hopefully avoid the, the areas that are uh, right inside the red zone and um, 
the most dangerous, right? So if you see a large group of police officers, you know that's where all the danger is going to be. So stay away from the concentrated uh, sections where the police are. Have you won? Have you lost? Or is this not over yet? Um, I want to be very careful about the choice of words because I don't want it to be uh, I don't want it to be reported or misrepresented as an actual war. But I'm going to use an analogy. Okay. This is one battle in a larger war for our freedoms. I don't, this is not a, a, a white flag of surrender by any means at all. Like I said in the beginning, we are a decentralized organic uh, movement. There is no single leader here that can be pointed to and say, yeah, that guy's in charge of making the decisions. We're all here. I'm a, I'm a volunteer. I haven't been paid by, by this convoy at all. I haven't been paid, I haven't had a job since September. So this is not a, 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 a flag of surrender. I, I, we put out a message telling everybody, if you choose to go home, chin up, shoulders back, head held high, you've done your part, time to regroup, and then reevaluate what the next step is for us. Do you think there'll be another gathering somewhere sometime? Um, I think anything's possible. Um, people are tired of this, and after they've seen what they've seen today, they're not going to be deterred. They're not going to be intimidated or afraid. If anything, I think it's going to have the reverse effect. I think people are going to get more involved, more engaged. Okay, so not that I want to talk about my own personal thing here, but Canadians should be absolutely disgusted and outraged by the fact that I have not had a warrant for my arrest, I have not been criminally charged, I haven't been convicted, but my bank accounts have been frozen, my credit cards have been uh, canceled, and my spouse's credit score dropped 109 points yesterday. She's not here, she's not tied to me, she's not even, she doesn't even have my last name. So, Canadians should be absolutely outraged that when the federal government doesn't have a legal mechanism to do that without actual due process, but they can deputize the banks into taking away your assets from you and trying to, how exactly am I supposed to feed my kids? How am I supposed to pay my bills now? Right? Have I been charged with a crime? Not that I know of. There's no warrants for my arrest that I know of. I haven't been convicted of anything, but they've targeted my spouse's credit score, canceled the credit card, canceled the bank account. Unbelievable. This is what, this is absolutely what this has always been about. You can't do it with the laws, so you subvert the law. You can't do it through negotiation or words, so you use force. We're going to take two more questions here. Yep. It's Arthur here from Newsly Canada. Do you have a direct message for Canadians who are against this movement or against this protest? One, we've always been here for even the people that hate us. Two, if we don't take the stand now, the precedent will be set. And in the future, the things that the people that hate us hold near and dear to their hearts and to their lives will be taken away from them. That's a guarantee. That's an absolute guarantee. So what I would encourage all of the people that hate us to honestly look, stop looking at mainstream media footage, stop believing those lies because they are egregious lies. Start looking at social media, start looking at the videos you've seen from this, the protest here. Get a different perspective. Find out your own truth. I can't tell you the truth, but go out and find it. It's there, it's right in plain sight. But you're never gonna get told the truth by the propaganda that gets pumped out from CTV and CBC and some of the other mainstream media outlets. You'll never hear the truth. Tom, final question, Bridge yeah. City. Yeah. Michael Claussen from Bridge News. Um, have there been any 
been any wins that you would like to share with us? <coughs> Despite the violence yesterday from the police, that's, those streets are still filling up with Canadians on foot. There's still a lot of support. And to me, that's the biggest win that we're ever going to have um, here in Ottawa. <coughs> Maybe, just maybe, somebody, <coughs> excuse me, somebody in uh, Parliament finds their moral courage, breaks ranks with their party, gets in front of a microphone and shows them shows themselves to be a true leader. That hasn't happened yet. Um, there's been a lot of wins, a lot of wins here, on, like on a personal level. Um, I've met so many wonderful people that I, I will never forget. Um, and I hope to be in contact with for the rest of my life. Um, and it's been a grassroots movement. It's not been any single one person who's been leading the way. We've all been leading from every single truck driver who came here by themselves to a giant convoy of 40 to 50 trucks that came here and had one person corral all of them and speak for that group. We've had a lot of wins. <coughs> 